Okay, we are live after a bit of a hiccup on Facebook with Stefan Watts, Director of Study Options, which is an organisation based in the UK that helps students apply to Australia and New Zealand. Uh, so Stefan is here today to talk to us all about um, applying down under and what that means for you and why you might consider it. So Stefan, welcome. Thank you. Uh, thanks for, uh, for asking me to be part of this, um, the new world that we live in. Um, and yeah, happy to be happy to be here for the next uh, however long to answer any questions there might be. So I, yeah, my name's Stefan. I've been um, advising students and helping students apply to universities in Australia and New Zealand for the past 15 years now. Um, and I studied in Australia myself. So that's kind of how, how this all began. Um, I had a, a not so great experience when I went to do it. Um, hence why I'm now um there to hold your hand so that it doesn't happen uh you know you don't have the experience that i had great well thank you i'm sure everyone appreciates it so we've got loads of questions because i have to admit that i'm not an expert on australia um or new zealand when it comes to admissions we deal very much with us um admissions because that seems to be the most complicated uh, but maybe you're going to prove me wrong and tell me how complicated it is to get into australia and new zealand but i suppose let's start off with um the obvious question, which is why would a UK student go and study in Australia or New Zealand? Great question, and probably the one that we get asked the most um, because it is a long, long way away. Um, so I guess a couple of things to bear in mind. So Australia and New Zealand, um, it's their universities, it's a British-based education system. So you are studying, you know, the degrees are usually called the same thing. They're generally the same length with a few exceptions. Um, but a lot of students are looking for, so for example, that our most common program is the Bachelor of Arts. So I guess in, in a similar way with, with uh, the liberal arts system in the US, students are looking for a bit more breadth in their, in their studies. So it allows them, it's not as broad as the US system, but it allows them to make a degree that is very unique to them. So for example, the University of Melbourne's Bachelor of Arts it insists that 25% of your study is from outside of your, um, your faculty. So it's a great opportunity for our, you know, for our languages students to then have a bit of marketing or business in there or something entirely different. Um, so yeah, that reason. You've also got students who are looking to, to study something where it is arguably the best place to study in the world. And you know, there you're looking at a number of sciences, particularly things like uh, marine biology, um, oceanography, that kind of program, um, and also for students where there may be, you know, a lot of demand here in the UK. So, um, look, it's competitive everywhere in the world, but things like like medicine um, or veterinary studies, um, where you know it is competitive everywhere. So, if they're not uh, successful in the UK, then they might look to Australia or New Zealand as well. Okay, interesting. It's really interesting what you say about students having to choose um, or study things outside of their, their main programme of study, because that sounds a little bit reminiscent of the liberal arts style yes. of education mm. in America. Do you get a lot of students who uh, apply to Australia for that reason, that they've got more? Yeah, than absolutely. And I, and, I, and I think it, you know, it. a lot of our students, you know, when they've looked at some of the UK offerings, don't want to be told what they have to study um and it is it, it's a great way like i said of them being able to make a degree that is very unique to them i mean look in in 15 years i could count on one hand the number of students that we've had that have pulled out um because they you know they are well prepared they know what they're getting and actually they they really enjoy um what they're studying i mean i've, I've got a i've got a bachelor of arts student who's currently in melbourne university of melbourne she started in um in march so you know, not a great time to arrive when lockdown is, is literally just happening. And, you know, they've been in lockdown for, you know, pretty much that whole time. Um, and I, I met up with her mother the other day and she said that she's, she's you know, funnily enough, she's actually loving the course. Um, you know, and actually the, the online offering has, has been great um, and the content's been great. Um, it's just the, the, the situation, not so great. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's great that these students can pick and choose and you know it's not it's not just um unique to the bachelor of arts you know within a bachelor of science they can do it to some extent within a bachelor of commerce so within a bachelor of commerce you could have um um yeah you could you could study your your you know your major call that marketing 
and then you could throw in a language or you could throw in something else so it's it's a really good way of really just doing what you want to do um, and what interests you rather than being told what to study. Okay, interesting. Um, and I mean, what are the main kind of degrees that people go and study there? Um, you mentioned medicine already. Is there a big advantage to study medicine there as opposed to the UK or Europe? Um, I mean, not, I mean, the, 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 the one thing to bear in mind with medicine is the cost because you're an international student. So the fees are, you know, the fees are fairly high. It is going to be as competitive as it is um, in, in, in the UK and elsewhere. Um, but, you know, for some students, so using an example, um, there's a, there's a undergraduate program up at James Cook, which is um, Northern Queensland. So there it's kind of a bit more of that indigenous medicine. So it's kind of flying doctor's territory, um, you're dealing with, you know, snake bites and, 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 and spiders. So it's, it's a very different type of medicine. So we've, we've sent, you know, students up there who, you know, it's, it's very rural medicine where, you know, you might be, you might be living in a, you might be practicing as a, as, as a, you know, on placement in a, in a town where your nearest hospital is four hours away. Um, so it's a very different, it's a very different proposition. Um, and I guess similarly kind of, you know, looking at something like veterinary programs, again, very, very competitive. Um, but there you you get to specialise in, in different types of animals because it is Australia. Um, and, you know, you have placements of things like dolphin rehabilitation centres and you're out on the Great Barrier Reef. So different experiences. Um, but both of those degrees allow you to then come back to the UK and practice um, and practice here. Interesting. Yeah, dolphin rehabilitation sounds great. Yes. Bites and spiders, not so much. <laughs> um, and what about uh, New Zealand? Do, um, is it a similar sort of um, yeah, thing? Yeah, similar sort of thing. I mean, yeah, New Zealand has, has you know, it's a smaller country. It's, it's, mm. it's got eight universities, which is helpful from, from an advisory point of view because, you know, there are the clear universities where you go. For example, Massey is the only place that, that offers VET. You know, there are, it's much clearer um, you have, you know, if we have students who are set on New Zealand, in a way, it's easier to advise because, you know, there there are fewer universities. Um, so, yeah, you know, exactly the same, exactly similar similar offering in terms of programs um, and, and structure and, you know, the breadth of degrees and everything else. Mm, interesting. Um, and what about the timeline? So obviously, New Zealand and Australia being on the other side of the world means their summer and winter is the other way around from ours. Do they start yeah. their degrees at the same time, like in September, or is it? No, so the most universities, there are again, various exceptions, but most universities, the main intake will be February. So <laughs> that February is like our September in the UK. So that's when the local students in Australia will and New Zealand will be commencing their programs. That's when the majority of our undergrads start going to go into um, halls accommodation and then you know move out with with people they've met so um, most universities in Australia and New Zealand run a two semester year so it will run from February to June and then July to November like I said there are some exceptions so it's possible to start so some universities are moving towards uh, the three trimester model um, so mm -hmm. there are exceptions outside of that. Okay, so if a UK student was going to go to study in Australia or New Zealand, they would take some time off at the end of their degree before, uh, sorry, at the end of their school before they start their degree? In the, in the main, yes. Um, so a lot of our students would use that as a time to, to work. Um, Pre-COVID, they used to use that as a time to travel, um, which will come back at some point, but at the moment, that's, that, that, that's not quite as easy. Um, but yeah, usually working, um, or traveling they can arrive in Australia you know a couple of months before the course starts to get to get um, to get kind of acclimatized sort out accommodation and and look for jobs um, but typically they will arrive yeah one to two months before the course program because before the course commences okay um yeah we, I'm sure we're going to get on to uh, the, the current situation in a moment <laughs> But let's not go there straight away. Um, I just want to send, uh, say a reminder to everyone who's watching, if you want to ask questions, feel free to do so. Um, just comment on the video. Um, I will see them come in and I will pose them straight to Stefan if they're, if they're appropriate. Um, it, Stefan, you said you studied in, uh, in Australia as well. Whereabouts did you study? Yes, yeah, so um, I was at University of Newcastle, which is two hours north of London, uh, of London, two hours north of, uh, of Sydney. 
Um, so I was um, I was at Haleybury here in in in, in the UK, um, and found out about the the Australia option and um, the the. I guess my, my school wasn't very well set up for, for me wanting to go to the other side of the world. Um, so yeah, that's what I did back in 99, um, study my degree over there. And, you know, it's, it's, it's led me to do what I do today, which, which, you know, I, I absolutely love because every day is very, very different. Um, dealing with lots of students and parents and schools and, you know, various different programs, various different mm -hmm. scenarios, um, which, which is great. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's, I mean, yeah, it does sound great. Um, the, what are some of the, I, I want to go into what some of the differences are in the application process, because, okay. uh, you know, in the UK, we know that it's very focused on grades. Is that similar in Australia? Do they just look at your GCSEs and A-levels or, or do they also look at your whole profile when you're applying? It's, it's mainly based on academics. Um, and, I, and I guess, you know, talking about differences, the one big difference usually that students come back to us with is that for comparable universities with the UK a lot of students will find that entry requirements in Australia are lower so using a say a Bachelor of Arts for example so Bachelor of Arts at Warwick you're probably at Warwick Durham you're looking at three A's maybe an A star and two A's um, that same program at, at, a, at a group of eight university which is like the Russell group in the UK um, you know, you're probably looking around three B's or an A and two B's or two A's and a B. So a little bit, a little bit lower. Mm. Um, so that's, it's, you know, it's, it's a supply and demand thing. You know, there are more places available there. So there's less demand, it's less demand driven. So, you know, what, um, what the university sets their entry requirements to be is, you know, is a student with three B's going to successfully and, and, you know, and, and, and very well compete, complete um that degree um and the answer is yes okay that's interesting so is that generally the philosophy in um, those universities that the entry requirements are lower but then you're expected to to keep up with the, the work when you're there yeah i mean i think if, if you look at what you know where we were in the uk probably 20 odd years ago the the entry there, there was less demand you know there wasn't okay. the the encouragement to go to university so there's less demand so you know, a similar course probably would have been three Bs back, you know, when I was when I was applying to university mm -hmm. in the UK. Um, and it's, you know, it's become a demand thing here. You know, everyone wants to go to Durham and Warwick to do their to do their Bachelor of Arts, whereas the entry requirements haven't really changed a huge amount since we've been um, since we've been doing this. OK, interesting. So I've got another question here, which is, um, is it normal for students to apply to both the UK and Australia or New Zealand at the same time in the same way that many people will apply to US and UK? Yes, absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's a good way of, you know, having, having, you know, a number of different options. I mean, the, the application process for Australia and New Zealand is fairly straightforward. So, um, you know, once they, and a lot of our students like to apply around the same time of UCAS, and we would encourage that just to kind of get it out all out of the way at the same time. Um, so once they've got their predicted grades, it's possible to then apply um, for, for universities in Australia and New Zealand. Um, the typical turnaround on an undergraduate application and ignoring vet and medicine and, 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 a, and a few others uh, is about four to six weeks. So they know fairly soon where they stand. That would then be a conditional offer based on achieving their final grades. So come, you know, ALA results or IB results day comes round and they're sat there with, you know, knowing whether or not they've got into University of New Zealand, University of Australia or University in the UK. And it's then it's then decision time, um, you know, which 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 of those options should they take? Yeah. Well, I mean, faced with the proposition of going straight off to university or having six months off. Um, <laughs> um, it, on that note, if a student, um, let's say they decide to go to Australia and New Zealand and, and they've got their place there, are they able to enter earlier than, um, than the start of their course or, or are, they, are they not allowed to, to do that? Yeah, so it's essentially once, once the student visa has been granted, you can enter. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's typically, you know, there used to be a rule where you could only apply four months before the course started to arrive three months before. But mm. now it's, you know, as, as soon as that student visa has been granted, you can enter the country. So even if that's like six months in advance, you can do that? It's usually not that far in advance, but, mm. 
yeah, you can, you can essentially arrive. However, one, one of the criteria to bear in mind is you can't start working until you've started, um, you, until your program has begun. Okay, okay. Well, uh, that brings me on to another point then, which is, um, are students able to work when they're on campus there? Yes, so um, students in, so I'll, I'll deal with New Zealand first. Uh, so uh, in New Zealand, well, I, actually they're, they're, they're both pretty similar. Um, so um, you can work part-time while you're studying. Part-time is defined as, as, as 20 hours a week. New, uh, Australia call it 40 hours a fortnight. Um, and if you then in your, in your holidays, you're able to work full-time. Um, then post-study um, in both countries, if you studied your degree, if you studied for, for um, your, your undergraduate degree in Australia and New Zealand, you're then eligible to apply for a, a work visa to remain in the country to work for a number of years. That depends where you have studied um, and yeah, the, and the degree you've studied, um, but that can lead to two, three, four years of, 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 a, of a work visa in, in country, which is, you know, for a lot of our students, they're then getting their first job in Australia and New Zealand and then coming back to the UK um, after a bit of time. So it's, you know, getting that first, arguably the, the, the hardest job you might ever get in your life being that first job after, after university. Um, they're, they're getting that first job and then returning later on to the UK. Okay, interesting. Um, okay, we've got a, a particular question here about applying as an international student, which obviously students from the UK will be. Yes. Um, do, do the Australian universities and, and New Zealand universities, do they understand the A-level system? We've got a particular question here saying that she found it difficult. This is someone who is now at a university in Australia, but okay. it's difficult to apply with international grades. I'm not sure what the difficulty was, but- is they, 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 they clearly didn't apply through us then, did they? Um, no, well, this is the thing. I was going to say, how can you help? Um, so, you know, e each university will publish A-level results based on, um, so five points being an A, four points being a B and so on. Um, and, and IB results, they, they will publish. Um, the, 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 the tricky bit comes sometimes where universities are asking for certain prerequisite subjects. So, for example, the majority of Bachelor of Commerce programs asks for a maths to A level or sometimes to AS level. Um, but there are ways around it. There are online courses that can be done. And depending on what the A levels are, um, you know, we, we, that's something that we, we spend a lot of time, you know, liaising with school and student um, to make sure that they are applying to the right universities um, with the right A-level grades um, and knowing that they will, that they should be, um, you know, successful in, in, in getting offers. Um, but yeah, each, each of the universities will sometimes look, university websites, there's the, there's the good, the bad and the ugly. And, you know, sometimes even I, having done this for many, many years, find it hard to find the right information, um, you know, for specific students. Um, Mm. but it is there <laughs> it is there somewhere I and mean, what what we do so you know students that contact us we have um uh, subject courses course lists um that includes the a-level grade requirements on them okay great um well on that note uh, what what does study options do so obviously you help students apply through this process but it, to put it another way um it, why would a student use you as opposed to doing it on their own? Okay, so, I mean, look, one, one example I would always use is that, you know, for, for, for doing my tax return every year, I will use an accountant um, because, you know, they know a lot more about it than I do. Um, and it's, it's the same thing with us, I guess. You know, we have jointly, so myself and Sarah, who set up study options, um, we have between us, nearly 40 years worth of experience. Um, and that's, that's, you know, without the other, with, with the other um, members of the team. So, you know, look, we, we know what we're doing. We've been doing this for a very, very long time. And it's, it's our job to make sure that the students are applying to the right universities and are successful. Um, we are a completely free service because we're funded by the universities in Australia and New Zealand. So we're able to uh, waive application fees, which ra range generally from $90 to $150 per application. Um, we're able to certify documents, um, and usually that means the school sending them to us by email and us certifying them. Um, we will um, submit the applications on behalf of the students. 
Um, we will, as I said, we'll certify documents um, and we're there to kind of make sure, you know, we, we visited all the universities that we work with. So we know that, you know, if you are, if you've got very pale skin and don't particularly like the heat, we're not going to send you to Northern Queensland. Um, you know, we know where is best if you are a rower, if you are a swimmer, um, if you are, you know, and it, it's, it's that kind of detail, I guess, that, that, that we have, um, the, the knowledge of which we've gained over many, many years of what we, mm. of, of, of what we do. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a person to call in, in the same time zone. Um, you know, trying to get through to universities, whether that's in Australia, New Zealand, UK, US, is, isn't, isn't, isn't particularly easy all the time. Um, and it's then helping with things like accommodation with flights um, and with visas. So I, I, I personally check every single one of our students' visa applications before they, before they go. Um, that, you know, our, our visa rejection rate is less than 0.01% in 15 years. Um, and that's the way it will remain. Um, like so yeah, it's... Wrong. <laughs> um so yeah you know it's kind of you know it's it's yeah it, there there isn't really a reason not to use us um and we you know we liaise with the schools we liaise mm -hmm. with the students we liaise with 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 the families um to make sure that you know the student is very successful the other thing we do is you know we know what scholarships are out there we know what students of ours in the past have been successful in getting those scholarships um, so, for example, I could tell you now that, that if you've if there are straight A students um, who are looking um, at, a, at, at a group of eight universities. So, um, like I said, like the Russell Group in the UK, University of Western Australia at the moment is offering scholarships of fifteen thousand dollars per year to those students. So, um, you know, it's a it's a top 100 university. Um, it would bring then the cost of a Bachelor of Arts down to less than what it is in the UK. Okay. So it's, it's stuff like that, you know, it's, you know, yeah. we know that there are, you know, there are, there are a number of universities that are offering 50% scholarships for high achieving students. We also know there are certain universities where you're not going to get a scholarship at all unless you've got five A stars. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's kind of, you know, it's managing expectations as well um, as kind of guiding students into what might be available for them and whether or not the university is right. You know, I, I think you've got you know, it's a big step if you haven't been to Australia. I mean, I think, I think university guidance is, 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 is so important. I think, you know, the job that, that you do, that we do, is, 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 is so critical because you've got, mm. you know, so many choices out there. And, you know, I'm, and I know you are as well, Jason, you know, I'm just very pro study abroad. And whether that's Australia, New Zealand, whether that's America, US, Canada, uh, sorry, US, I said US and America. Uh, but yeah, whether it's Europe, I think it's, it's such a great opportunity, such a, such a brilliant thing to do um, for students that you know quite often Australia isn't the right proposition um, and you know I, I, I know enough about the industry to say look have you thought about um, have you thought about somewhere else and it's it's look you know as you know it's 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 looking at you know that right the right student and finding the right fit I mean I've, I've done a similar thing with my daughter recently for schools and you know we found the right fit in, 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 in a school for my daughter and what we try to do with each of our students is find that right fit, you know, based on, you know, campus universities, city universities, size of a university, um, uh, academics, so rankings, um, plus things like climate and sport and, you know, everything else. Mm. Well, I, I completely agree. And um, I, you know, I agree about trying to find students the right fit university. Mm. Sometimes that's America. Some sometimes it's the UK. Um, yeah. But like you said, it's it, it's about gaining that experience abroad, um, and also finding a place where you're going to really thrive at university. And it sounds Absolutely. like Australia and, and New Zealand are potential ones for that. Mm -hmm. um, so just to finish uh, that that conversation about what you guys do, do you represent every university in Australia and New Zealand? No, we don't. So of the there are. 40 universities and we represent 20, 28 I think of them um, so you know it's it, we we are sometimes able to assist with other applications um, but it's you know that's our knowledge base they're the universities we've been to and these are the universities that are that are being asked about by the majority of um, students in the UK so um, you know it's uh, I've mentioned the group of eight before so we work with all of the group of eight um and then and then additional universities of that we work with all eight in new zealand because 
like I said before, it's it's easier to do that, um, and they all have fairly different propositions. Okay. Um, so, so if a, if a student came to you and they and you thought, well, actually, they might be a good fit for a university outside of the ones that you deal with, is that something you would tell them? Absolutely, and you, you know, and I, and I you know, I, again, I know I know enough people in the industry that I would either put them in touch or I would help them to some extent through that process. Mm. Um, you know, I'm I'm you know I. I firmly believe there is the right fit. And, you know, we do have people coming to us saying, right, this is the university I want to go to. And I say, look, it's not one that I can help with, but this person can, or I'll put you in touch directly with someone at the university. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. We, you started talking a little bit about the financial side of things with um, the scholarships and things. So sure. if there were no scholarships. If a student didn't get any kind of financial aid, what are the rough sort of costs that you would expect going to an Australian or New Zealand university? Okay, so, um, you know, international fees. So they each each university set their own fees and that is according to, you know, the university, but also the subject. So um, using Bachelor of Arts, which will be at the lower end of the fees, <clears throat> that will range from about £12,000 up to £20,000 per year. Um, and then lab-based type programmes will be, will be more than that. Um, obviously, medicine, dentistry, veterinary um, are, are going to be at the at the higher end as well. Um, so Bachelor of Science, 14,000 through to probably 22, 23,000 pounds a year. Um, but yeah, it does vary quite a lot between universities. Okay. And with scholarships then, so are, are there a lot of scholarships available? Is it is it quite easy for students to get them or... Um, are there other forms of aid that students in the UK might be eligible for? There's not really any any other forms of aid. So you obviously can't take your student, be it student um, loan from the UK. You can't get a student loan in Australia, um, and there aren't really the, any other bodies, you know, unlike the US outside of outside of that. Um, in terms of scholarships, um, you know, as long as students are willing to be flexible, there there can be some. Um, you know, if you're a if you're a strong student, and I'm talking an A's and B student, um, you might be looking at up to a 25% scholarship. Um, if you're a if you're a straight A student, as I said, with um, you know you using University of Western Australia as an example, that's probably the best one out there for a, for a three A student. Um, you're looking at a fifteen thousand um, dollar reduction, which would, in in a lot of cases, represent about fifty percent. Um, so there are a few. You know, you're looking at twenty five to fifty. We've had, you know, the odd student here and there get a full scholarship, but you are looking for five straight A stars. Okay, right. So um, you've got to be a good student to get. Yes, yeah. yes. That's what we always tell students. It's like, yes, yeah. there's money available, whether it's financial aid or whether it's scholarships. The better yeah. student you are, the more likely you are. To get yes, them. yeah. And I guess, I guess, one thing to point out that, that is asked quite a lot when it comes to scholarships. Unlike the US, there are no sports scholarships. Okay, um, that was going to be my next question. Yes, because <laughs> sports are really big in Australia and New Zealand. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. I mean, look, there, there are. In case anyone wants to correct me, there are they 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 do some of them do offer what they call a sports scholarship, but it's it's often money towards kits and things like that. So it's not mm -hmm. a scholarship in 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 traditional terms what we would class a scholarship to be. Um, and you're right, you know, I mean, look, it's it's you know, Australia has eight times as many Olympic sized pools as the UK. You know their their sports facilities are incredible, um, and you know I, I, there are scholarships for their local students, but it's not something that that has ever really been offered for international applicants. They want to they want to they want to keep the Aussies the Australian sportsmen to themselves. <laughs> yeah, well, it makes sense. Yeah, um, it, but once they get to campus, right? They they're going to be watching a lot of sport and. I mean, in Australia, you're going to be watching a lot of sport. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, absolutely. I mean, and, and depending on where you are, and again, kind of geographically, it's something to bear in mind that you know, uh, um, uh, rugby league is 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 huge in Australia, and, and rugby league is kind of you know the main sport in certain parts of Australia. Mm -hmm. Union being more of a, a a New South Wales thing. Um, so again, you kind of got to bear certain things in mind if if depending on what your sport is, um, and where you know, that, that's best for you to do. But yeah, you know, I, I guess, you know, in a similar way to the UK and, and, and the US, you know, accessibility to sport is is is, is very easy. Um, and, you know, I mean, that's being a, being a student at uni in Australia, you know, that my mates would literally come to class, then they'd go out for a surf and then they'd, you know, then they'd be playing 
you know something in the in the evening and mm. it's you know the, the, both australia and new zealand they're they're kind of sports mad um you know every corner you turn there's a new there's a new pitch and a new stadium and a new lovely swimming pool and you know it's 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 great yeah um okay and what about work so we talked about work on campus but after graduating are students able to continue working in australia or new zealand and is it easy for them to find jobs over there yeah, so I mean, in, in terms of um, what they can do post-study, so um, yeah, if they've studied their degree, they can apply for a, for a work visa following uh, following graduation. Um, in terms of, is it easy? Um, hard to, hard for me to answer in the current context of of, of, of what is going on. Um, in 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 the past, our students have, have never really had too many issues picking up your typical, you know, student jobs while they're studying. So retail, mm -hmm. hospitality. Um, and then post study, um, a lot of our students do do stay on, um, have previously stayed on, and obviously we go we're going through a cycle here, um, and you know there's obviously going to be a, a, a period of, of unemployment everywhere in the world, um, but a lot of people, you know, you know, study education becomes a, a greater investment um, during the sessions, um, you know, and the, the good times will return. Um, I mean, Australia didn't go into a session in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the GFC. And, you know, Australia as a country has, has grown at, at, at a pretty amazing rate over the past, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. I mean, when I, when I started um, studying in Australia, so 20 odd years ago, you know, it was, you know, it was about $2.9 to the pound. We're now looking at about $1.84 to the pound at the moment. So the, the Australian economy has done extremely well um, over the last decade plus. Um, so yeah, you know there are you know a lot of a lot of um, kind of technology, um, a lot of cyber security. I mean, I think in Australia there is something like eighty percent of cyber security jobs aren't filled. Um, you know, students who are in health professionals tend to tend to jump into jobs mm. fairly quickly, um, teaching very quickly. Um, so yeah, again, depending on you know what the student has has studied in the past. Okay, but in terms of getting a visa, do they have to be sponsored in order to get a visa to? No, no, it's it's, it's a post-study work visa system. So oh, no. yeah, you know, prove that you've studied at a university for, for two years or more, apply for visa, visa granted. Great, and correct me if I'm wrong, but do both countries still do uh, kind of working holiday visas like they used to? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, it's a good, you know, and a lot of, you know, a lot of the students that we've, that we've helped in the past have, you know, more often than not, used up, use that visa, and you know that's where that first love of New Zealand or Australia has right. has come from. And you know, they they want the great outdoors. They 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 might have seen one of the universities or got a friend at the university and think actually this is this is you know a great option for me. Yeah, I'm too old for it now, though, Stefan. You know, you're never too old. My my oldest student is 67 that I ever sent to Australia. Oh, but what's the limit on the working holiday visa, though? Oh, sorry, working holiday visa. I thought you meant study. Um, working holiday visa, yes, you're right, it's 31. But that's a good idea, go back to university. Yeah. In, I'd love to. Um, what, what is the 67-year-old studying? I think she was studying a, a business programme, but we, yeah, we, we, we deal with, I mean, our, yeah, that's our range, um, 18 to 67. Um, but we have a lot of mature students um, who are looking for kind of, you know a bit of a change and that could be teaching it could be a business degree so it's yeah it's 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 it's, it's very varied my day okay yeah um i'll have to look into some courses then <laughs> um okay let's talk about the, the 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 elephant in the room which is the um current crisis that the, the world is in um yes. how has that affected things in terms of admissions to universities over there so it's, you know, I guess the first thing I would say is that I think both countries have adapted very, very well. And, you know, whether whether you or I agree with what they've done um, in terms of, you know, very, very early closures of borders, um, they have contained it. You know, I think New Zealand has, has eradicated Australia of, I think, cases yesterday were five or six mm -hmm. across the whole country of, you know, 25 million people. Um, you know, they there is going to come a time very soon where they need to open borders and they, they, they have started to do so for, um, for certain students. So there are, there are pilot programs going into Australia and New Zealand in the next coming months. 
Um, there are exemptions for certain students. So certain kind of medical related students or some research students are, are, are coming back in, um, you know, on a bit of a kind of slow and steady and you know, obviously we've had a, we've had a, um, there was an outbreak in, in, in Melbourne a couple of months ago, and that's kind of put things back a little bit. Um, but, you know, they, the Australians, you know, they do, they do quarantine very well. And, you know, that's all set up, that's in place. You know, there will be quarantine in both countries for any students who are, who are looking to head out there um, mm. for the foreseeable future. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, Australia have have done you know Australia and New Zealand have done both done you know amazing jobs I mean their their um their number of cases I was saying to you earlier is is is, is less than I live in Bristol um their number of cases you know two weeks ago were less than what we what we were getting in Bristol um mm. population of, of, of half a million that's changed now because of the the students here in Bristol and it's changed because the the numbers in in Australia have gone down um even more since then so yeah. um yeah it's you know it's 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 under control for now um and there are you know student visas they they started processing student visas again back in april student visas sorry not in june i think it must have been uh student visas are now um being processed in the same time as pre-covid levels um pre-covid times mm -hmm. uh, which is encouraging you know it's it's a, it's a big industry for both countries and you know the, the international students you know, give a lot and add a lot to 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 both countries, which are you know they're both very multicultural countries, and you know having having international students there really do add to a campus, a city, and 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 the whole country. Great, and obviously the the pandemic kind of broke in February and March, and that must have been after students, most students had already started yes. their, their course there. So were they able to stay or? Uh, yeah so of of the of the of the students we sent um i believe we only had two that returned um and the rest have stayed there and have been you know combination of, of studying online mainly the ones that are in melbourne other university campuses you know in other parts of australia have have kind of reopened and it's a bit of a blended learning with 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 online and and, and on campus um and the feedback you know we've, we've been in regular contact with our students and the feedback um, that we've had, particularly from our students in Melbourne, who are the ones that, you know, are, have had it arguably the hardest um, because of a kind of very, very extended lockdown is that actually the online, you know, they're, they're very well set up for online study. And, you know, I, I spoke to one of my students a couple of weeks ago and she said she's got, you know, an hour, an hour per week with each of her um, uh, tutors for each of each of the subjects she's studying. And you know, it's, 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 you know, Zoom conversation online which is great, you know, and she's, she's really, you know, she's getting involved, she's really enjoying the course. Similarly, I spoke to a student today who's um, started online from the UK. She, was, she started in, a, in, a, in an August intake um, and she's got the option of, of, um, of lectures at four different times throughout the day, um, which is obviously to cater for because of time zones. Um, so she's at the moment, she's studying from nine o'clock in the morning um, so it's, you know, I think, the, you know, that they've adapted extremely well, um, you know, and, you know, hopefully we can get, you know, all of our students that are that are here at the moment back out to Australia or back to Australia uh, and New Zealand as soon as those borders open. Yeah. And fingers crossed that it will all be OK by February. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, that's great. Uh, Stefan, um, I, I think I've covered everything that I was going to ask and um, unless anyone's got any other questions and wants to pop them in the comments, please do so now. But is there anything I should have asked you, Stefan, anything I haven't covered? Um, I don't think so. Uh, no, I, not, not that I can think of. I think that was a very, uh, that was a good, good set of questions there. Thank you. Um, well, it was only because I knew nothing. So I just asked you <laughs> on my mind. Um, no, I appreciate your time, Stefan, and I'm sure everyone else listening uh, does as well. Um, Stefan, just to finish off, how can people get in touch with you if they want to find out more? So um, everything's on the website. It's probably the easiest way to go. So studyoptions.com um, and then look, call us. We can set up Zooms. We can set up um, Google Hangouts, whatever anyone anyone needs. Um, we're doing a lot of um, a lot of sessions with with schools at the moment um, or you can just pick up the phone or email, whatever. You know, we are we are here. Uh, so um, yeah, Great. you go to studyoptions.com and, and, and get our details through there. 
Fantastic. And just to let everyone listening know, uh, next week at the same time, three o'clock, I'll be talking to Sarah Borwell, who runs Tennis Smart, which is an organization that helps students find tennis scholarships in America. Um, Sarah knows everything there is to know about uh, tennis, uh, considering that she was um, number one in doubles in the UK some time ago. Um, so please do tune in for that uh, to find out more about tennis and, um, and American scholarships. But for now, Stefan, thank you so much for Brilliant. joining. I'm going to end the live stream now, but we can continue chatting after. Brilliant, thank you.